lesson this morning is from Numbers chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. From Mount Hor they sent out by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a servant of bronze and put it upon a pole, and whenever a servant bit someone, that person would look at the servant of bronze and live. Through these words, our God is still speaking. Thanks, Thanks be to you, you are still, still speaking, God. God. such times. I think, too, the story was intended to have 
some humor. And I want to start with what's funny, or what's meant to be funny, in a ha-ha sort of way. First of all, I have to report that there's a pun in Hebrew. Words for serpent and bronze are sound like pun, niash and niash. Kind of like saying diamond back and diamond. One slithers, one's shiny. Opposites. Kind of funny. But obviously funnier is humanity's broad spectrum of complaints about difficulties. Since the rescue from Egypt, the people had previously whined a lot. And in the lesson, they are still whining about the rescue. And this time, they're whining incoherently about food. We don't have any, and it tastes bad. Up to this point, God had worked the seemingly impossible to rescue the Israelites from Errors and injustices of oppression in Egypt. And a part of the rest required them to be in the wilderness. God didn't snap fingers and have it instantly in the promise. God didn't send 747s to airlift them out with a mid flight meal before they landed in Israel. God didn't send trucks to drive them out with packaged food either. They had to walk in the wilderness. And look to the wilderness for necessities, and they had to also look for dangers to avoid when they were out there. And the Bible tells us they complained about the walk and the work and the provisions. They were alive and free, but life with liberty was not perfect. It never is. They weren't as comfortable as they could be. We, we never are. It's kind of like they wanted fine cuisine, but that's something like ramen noodles. And instead of being grateful to have food and life and liberty, they grouse about it. And the text tells us they are impatient and spoke against God and Moses over this, we don't have food and don't like food, we have craziness. And then we're told God sent snakes. Notably, the text does not actually say the causation of the snake's arrival was the complaining. The Lord just sent snakes. Poisonous ones. Creation does that sometimes, not punitively, naturally. Just as God sent that gopher snake among Nancy and me, so two venomous snakes arrived among God's people in the midst of their complaints about food. They now had something to really be concerned about. Serpents that bite and kill are on a whole other side of the spectrum of complaints than food that you don't like. Life is like that. You complain about small things like the flavor of life giving sustenance that we are truly lucky to have. And then those relatively small complaints are put in perspective when threats that really do matter show up. And they do show up. COVID-19, of course, is a stark and present example. The laws of nature, creation's way, what the Creator has provided us with is full of awe and wonder and many positive things, love and babies and rainbows and flowers and mountains for sure. And they also mysteriously provide us with life and sustenance and the means to survive and thrive. That's positive stuff. There's a lot of it. But the laws of nature creation its way with, with the creator being also includes what we consider negative things. Famine, venomous animals, and diseases like COVID for sure. And mysteriously, death, threats of death. And the combination of positive with negative means overall, life's not easy. We can pray to God to magically snap divine fingers to rid us of the negative, venomous aspects of life. But God does not appear to violate the laws of nature. God doesn't do magic in that instantaneously kind of way. Death and threats of death and harm to us and others exist, and at some time they will come and bite us in one form or another. And what we can do is suggested by this 
story where the naked of him arrives. We lift the naked of up, and we see God despite him. We see God through him. We work on seeing the Creator there in the midst of creation. See the shining diamonds of creation, even, even in the deadly diamondbacks, real and metaphoric. The bites of the poison parts of creation will still hurt, but the negative effects are lessened when we know God's in all of this, the negative and the positive. I did read other commentaries suggesting this, this is just me talking, but I see this story as having a very similar message as the book of Job, that when bad things happen, we turn to God, we do our best. You know, all of them, the ups and downs and level ground, our call is to focus on God, even through the snakes. And we are to do our best from where we are, wherever we are. We've seen so many people doing that during the pandemic, medical and essential workers, government leaders, and the mask wearing, social distancing masks. Think of that. Those human actions create good in the midst of the bad. Complaining and blaming can't do that. Looking to God and doing our best can. And while those actions may not magically instantly rescue us from deadly snake poison or COVID-19 or other negative happenings in life, they do rescue us. They add good. Is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Focusing on God and doing the best we can when all is said and done is the most that the Israelites and all people of God, us, can do. What it does is it makes diamonds out of the coals, the lumps of coal in life. Oh, 